Hello everybody. Okay, I've received an HF1000 unit through the post to repair today, so I thought I'm going to do a video on this because I get asked about this all the time. So the original diaphragm, which would have sat on the faceplate like this, the lead wires from the coil come out of the top or come out of the side near the surround. So they then run over the faceplate and are soldered into place. And then these sort of glue, black tacky glue kind of stuff, seals them in and then you join them on the back. Now the replacement diaphragms, which is here, it's fairly traditional. You could try and poke through the dome and run the wires out of the front, but you're actually going to be putting a hole in the dome. So I don't do that. What I'm going to try and simulate is what I do with these is, and it is worth noting that if you look carefully, I can't see it, and there is a red little dot there that indicates positive. So you can make sure that you wire it up the right way around. So I'm just going to lay this in here just for sort of these demonstration purposes. But what I'll do is I will centralize this coil on here. I will then, using this gasket, isolates the wire from the gap. And then I run black tape right to the edge of the magnet, which isolates the wires from this metal so they don't short out. And then you solder the lead wires to the terminals and put this back together. Um, it does leave the faceplate with these grooves in there. But in all honesty, I think that's the best way of doing it. So just to reiterate, it's going to be running around the back of the faceplate, soldered directly to the terminals. You have to do, still have to line it all up, which isn't the easiest thing to do. But this gasket here lifts and puts the dome in the right place. So I'm pretty sure what you end up with And push it down properly but you'd end up with that and then with the magnet back on top and you make sure you isolate just with two thin strips of black tape just so the wires can't touch onto the magnet face plate and you're all good that will work and um, that's far less fiddly than having to poke holes through the diaphragm run the lead wires up through to the face plate and then apply some sort of glue over the lead wires to seal them all in in my opinion, the HF-1000 is a pretty fragile HF unit. The HF-1001 is far stronger. Um, in terms of sonic characteristics, I, I, I want to comment which is the better of the two. But yeah, these are pretty fragile and easily blown. All right, I hope that explains it for everybody. I'll get this one done now and um, we'll give it a test and check it's all working. Okay, aligned the dome. Put it all back together again, soldered directly onto the back of one side of the terminals. Um, I'll cut that excess bit off once I've tested it and made sure it's okay. The only drawback to doing this is, like I said, you only end up with one side of the prong, but that's no big deal. Um, that, in my opinion, is the easiest way of doing these. Um, I'll give that a test now and we'll just check that there's a circuit. <coughs> this will be embarrassing if there isn't. <laughs> so there should be a circuit even on these top bits, which there is. Um, if that's meant to be a 4 ohm dome, they're way out, that's 8.5 ohms. Let's see if it has a description in here. doesn't but I'm a hundred percent sure that an HF 1000 yeah I mean that's reading nearly 9 ohms 8.6 ohm so it was done but how accurate those domes are anyone's guess um, I'm sure an HF 1000 is a 4 ohm unit uh, maybe there's various different 
diaphragms available perhaps but that is definitely an 8 ohm unit um, yeah so all I do now is just trim the excess off there which allows you the ability to reconnect these what this guy has done like I said is pick this off I, I wouldn't have done that I'd have left that on there because you're not running the wires across the faceplate and it looks somewhat original like that with those still in place um, you know, I've only got half the bits here so yeah. all that stuff is it's just to hide the lead wires also another thing be careful when you're soldering these back together because if you heat this up too much that will melt in there and that will drop out um, yeah that's pretty much it so uh, I hope this uh, works okay for for the customer of this actually there's a description yeah I am sold Celestian HF1000 Ditton 1133 UL6 ULA replacement diaphragm, 4 ohms. Well, that definitely isn't 4 ohm. That's definitely... Let that settle down. Yeah, I'm reading 8.6. Just check that on it. Yeah, that's an 8 ohm diaphragm all day long okay that's basically it um just be careful guys that is not a 4 ohm unit but that is how i do them so just to recap don't try and run the wires over the top of the face plate you probably could there is another way you could potentially do this is if you drill tiny little holes through the face plate you could poke the wires up over the top and resolder them onto the top of the terminal plates but that does remain removing all of this stuff and somehow being able to reapply it also trying to solder onto the top of this is pretty much guaranteed going to drop that out the bottom so like i said i'll just trim those wires off i'll give this a test i'll run a frequency sweep through it and just check that it is definitely okay but that is five minutes tops work realigning this up isn't the easiest thing in the world but basically as long as you get this surround suspension to fit into this sort of recess on the face plate as long as you line that up you're pretty much sure that it's going to drop in okay um so i line it up here first and then carefully place it on as if i would if you ever need to take these apart again, you'd probably have to realign it because this is not stuck to those cardboard gaskets like the original one was. But we'll run a frequency through and we'll see if everything's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's all okay. Yep, no horrible vibrations and nastiness. I could connect this up to a crossover and a bass driver and just play some music through it to check. Um, but I'm happy with that that's working okay. So yeah, in a nutshell, that is literally how you very quickly repair an HF1000 unit. And the only sacrifice to doing it that way is you lose one side of the terminal post. That's it, that's the only negative. Um, if the customer wants, probably try and melt some black wax in there or 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 some glue or something just to neaten that up but yeah that's how i do it anyway guys take care catch up with you soon